scenes here from Carolyn. Thank you for sending it to us. And I've made an offer to her <clears throat> to take a look at her scenes and to develop them. I, she sent me uh, some uh, attachments via email and I said, you know, her scenes look fantastic. And But I was saying they're at a point where um, some finer kind of details can be employed to really put her pieces over the top, okay? Like this one here, I mean, this looks fantastic right here. Um, but there's little types of touches when a scene gets to this point that can just bolster um, the piece in general in terms of extending kind of the visual range of different aspects of the scene. And I'll um, write down what those are here. Um, and kind of really narrow down a lot of the different concepts. All right now this one was one where she was testing out some alcohol inks and I'm going to test if I can go back into here where it gets really heavy and 
This is what I talk about a lot in terms of lighting. When you move into your darker tones, can you um, kind of put the brakes on when you move into those medium and darker tones in terms of the lighting um, kind of areas? So on something like this, she's retained that illumination in the trees, um, in this uh, visual lead-in in terms of the path. But we're going to test out here if I can remove some of that. I don't know if this is on photo paper. It looks like it's on cardstock, so I don't know if I can remove some of that. So, But I'll show you what the things that you can do um, in a situation like this, provided there are some kind of opportunities for the different types of marks we can do. <clears throat> okay, this one kind of goes into the, some of the same issues. I think it looks fine right now. But there are some different things we can do on here and uh, kind of to improve again um, in this case it's the, um, the textural range and also the lighting scheme of the piece and that and this one would be a perfect opportunity for um, some uh, white pigment ink all of them could be but this one especially right here and this one right here i, I I don't know if this is what she was talking about um, in terms of the eagle. That didn't print out all the way, but all we need to do is just fill that in with some black ink because, I mean, if the whole wing was missing there and we had to kind of, you know, draw that in, it would be a little bit more of an issue, but um, we have the outlines like that. So if you don't have a, like a stamp position or where you can just stamp it again, or if you're worried about kind of, you know, um, inking it up and uh, get going for another imprint right there and kind of having it off center where it looked blurry that would be bad but in a situation like this all you need to do is fill it in but we'll do that and uh, oh, this is a self-addressed stamped envelope here but on each one of these scenes right here um, I tell you what let me uh, pause the video and uh, I'm going to take a picture some pictures of these so we can do some before and after um, comparisons and also, also put this little chart down here, and uh, we can refer to it as I go into these things, and you can t um, tell kind of, yeah, in a more, I don't know, spelled out way, exactly what I'm doing here in terms of the uh, kind of the visual language breakdown of each one of these pieces, okay? Okay, this is just a quick chart of the different things I'm going to address with these three scenes here, okay? Um, Okay, so just so we know what we're talking about here, I hope you can read this, but <laughs> this is a range right here, okay? These three different ranges of breaking down um, kind of visual communication, okay? So value, that's the relative light and dark of something. So let's say this full range here is, you know, completely white and dark would be 100% black, okay? That's the relative um, value of something when I'm, we're talking about value, okay? Now, intensity is dull and bright. Now, bright, a lot of times people kind of mistake with light, okay? There could be a very bright light and it could be very light, okay? But brightness is the relative intensity of something, a really bright color, like a pastel blue is light, right? But it's not a very bright blue, like something like a, you know, like a cobalt blue or something like this, okay? A super deep navy blue. Those are brighter colors than something like this. You see, this one's like a soft kind of pastel blue, right? But this is a much brighter um, uh, intensity of blue right here. Um, not all colors are, you know, um, that are darker are brighter. You could have a dull you know, um, dark color too, like a any color that you add black to or something like that, or white to, it dulls it out, okay? Um, yellows can be very, very bright and very, very light too. So it's just the relative intensity of a specific hue that changes this. Now, this is something that <clears throat> a lot of people don't address very much in scenes. There could be a very pastel scene or something like that, but oftentimes... Um, like ink companies, they go for the brightest of colors, you know, that they can get. Now, Marvy's pretty well, much known for having some very bright colors. Now, that's fine. You can go for some really, um, you know, a color scheme 
or an intensity scheme that's in this area and it can look great or you can have all super bright colors that are very loud and those scenes or just cards in general can look great as well but if you want kind of visual variety and a range of things when you extend your range out you're talking about a richer palette of something rather than a narrow palette of something okay uh, you can get into different richnesses by, you know, changing the hue around, but I'm not going to talk about hue in terms of color on this video because these scenes don't need um, to address color. But texture, this is a really big thing in rubber stamping, and I think it's something that's very much um, kind of lacking in terms of most of the techniques that people... Um, employ to finish any type of card it could be anything not just scenes but in stamping we want things with very crisp impressions we don't want you know blurry impressions generally unless someone's really utilizing some kind of interesting technique and they have a really good command over it but white pigment ink is something that i really extend the visual range um, with in a very simplistic fashion so you can go from most um, cards you see are all within this range of sharpness so all this area down here in terms of textural range is really just absent in most types of cards that I see. not everyone a lot of some people do like bleaching techniques and uh, Oh, I don't know. They might stamp things out in softer colors, pastel, things like that. They might, people might be watercolorists or using pan pastels to color in or something like that. That changes the kind of the, the textural range as well. But if we're just talking about inks, okay, most inks, not pigment inks that are, that are more like paint, but transparent inks, dyes, um, watercolors, uh, alcohol markers, etc. It's mostly in the sharper range in terms of an overall end result because the impressions are all sharp. And again, that's what we want in uh, stamping. But let's play around with um, all of these different types of aspects in these pieces right here, okay? Uh, I'm not sure which one to start off with here, but uh, I tell you what, let's start off with the monochromatic right here. This is a really nice composition, and it's kind of in a series of uh, scenes she's working in um, that features the, the lady with uh, a coffee cup there looking into different types of scenes and settings, and um, her uh, series is really looking fantastic at this point in time with the few pieces that I've seen so far. Um, but let's take a look at this one right here, and let's talk about the different things that I would recommend. And again, I thank her for sending these in because I can explain all these different types of things and she can do it, but I don't know, I, I, I worked for a Domino's Pizza when I was uh, in high school, and uh, one of the, the, the managers always used to, the managers were just like guys that were typically just right out of high school, and... Um, they would go to these managerial types of meetings and they'd come back with these little pearls of wisdom and things like that and they would say like one of the times they were uh, saying that um any uh comment you know be it a complaint or praise or anything like that if you hear it from one person then there's 25 other people uh on average that would have the same type of questions so um, this really affords us the ability to teach um, a lot of people um, some of the different concepts we're talking about here. But, okay, that being said, let's get into this piece right here. And let's talk about, um, let's just talk about from a, uh, we'll get to this chart here in a bit. But let's talk about um, some impression types of uh, uh, considerations here. Okay, now, um, with this bird right here. We really need to fill that one. It's missing kind of its wing there. And I'm just taking a black alcohol pen and just filling it in. If you have a dye based pen, maybe that would even be better because these are stamped out in a black dye based ink. Okay. So that is all taken care of. No problem right there. Um, but let's look at some other types of areas around here. Okay. And let's talk about just from a strictly coloring perspective. Okay. Now, she's hit some areas in here with some nice um, different values and things like that but in rocks like this um, we can see 
See where there's, there's higher concentrations of dots in these rocks here and there? Those are the perfect opportunities to go in and add some additional kind of a fleshing in of forms, okay? So this one is done in blues and grays. I'm going to grab some blues and grays right here, okay? So it's working in the same color scheme we're working with here. A lot of times I would do this after I've colored in with the dye base inks. She has already done that with the dye base inks. So let's go in here and let's flesh the scene out a little bit more with some grayscale, okay? Now grayscale, I mean just kind of hitting those intermediate tones in here. This is too bright of a blue right here, but I'll go over it with gray, okay? But hopefully you can see us getting in some additional shadow values into these darker areas. And where do you know to darken in? I'm darkening in the darker areas that I've drawn a lot more dots into, okay? They call it stippling. The more, the higher concentration of dots, the, um, the darker the area represents, okay? And I try to, and then it's through the manipulation of that dot pattern that I describe volumes and textures um, in all my designs. Okay, so hopefully you can see a little bit of a change. I'm going over the, some of the areas that she's already, you know, drawn in some, uh, or toned in some black. But I'm going in and kind of making these areas a little bit richer with color, okay? It's a blue-colored scheme, so the shadows are often the same colors as that general color scheme because we're saying that blue is kind of the... Uh, you know, the, the the color of lighting that's within this um, scene here. She has some trees in here, so I'm going to hit some areas underneath the trees with some additional tone. Let's see, those trees are casting the shadow, okay? All right, so that's some blue. Now let's kind of mellow out that blue a little bit. Let's go over it with some gray here. And I'll hit it with the in, in roughly the same areas, okay? All right, now see, anytime where you have these kind of gradations going on anywhere in the scene, unless you're just making a statement and you want something to stand out, which is cool because that's a really good technique to do. But if you're saying that shapes have form, they're rounded, they're three-dimensional, then it's really kind of important to stay consistent within all of the different forms. Okay, so now you can see that woman with the coffee right there, okay? She is not colored in. She's toned in with the colors that I've, uh, with the toning that I've created in my design. But she really needs to be fleshed out a little bit more in terms of volumes. We're doing it here on the rocks, so we need to do it on her too, okay? So I'm going to put her in, I don't know, let's put her in something kind of a little bit more neutral, like a tan, you know, uh, shirt or something like that, I don't know. Just something a little bit, you know, I don't want it in the same color as uh, the blue, although she could be. Just a little of that. Let's warm it up a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see, it's like a... Um, I forget the name of that uh, <laughs> leather out there. Um, I don't know. Tan shirt, we'll just call it tan shirt, okay? Put a little bit of color in it. Now, see, what I'm doing is I'm adding some different tones, kind of the same uh, color scheme, okay? Just to get some different, um, let's put a little bit up in her hat. She's color co coordinated, an individual. How about we'll give her some kind of a brownish, sandy, Sandy blonde, I don't know. I, I just want a color that's going to stand out a little bit, but we hit it with some different tones like this, okay, just so it's not kind of so uniform. Eh, let's go a little bit more brownish, tinge like that, okay. All right, so see, she's starting to come together a little bit more, doesn't she? Isn't she more integrated in with the scene? than before. And let's go with the, I don't know, 
people aren't pink, you know, but um, we'll give her, eh, I don't know, a little fleshy kind of um, colors, okay? So that was a little bit of pink, so I like to mix my colors a little bit. And she's an outdoors person, so she's a little bit tan, whatnot. Oh, I forgot her hand there. Okay. So then, so I, we fleshed her in now, so she's, she's more integrated into the scene, don't you think? She has visual weight, she's not see-through. Okay, now speaking of that, I, one of the things I was concentrating on this ledge here, so let's do the same um, types of fleshing in, in terms of volumes. I guess you can say this is a value type of thing. We are darkening in some areas, but it's, I don't know, I'm not really going, for, I'm not really thinking of textural range with um, something like this. I'm thinking more in terms of uh, kind of just describing volumes here. Now, I'm not going to do too much because it's really light in there, and I think I'm going to leave that for some, um, some extra, um, like a cloud formation or something of that sort. Okay. All right. Now, I don't want to make that mountain back there too dark because I want this foreground to really stand out too. But this is an instance where, and really all of them, where the white pigment ink, I don't want this to be a lesson just about white pigment ink, but I'm very fond of that and it just plain flat out works really well. Okay, this is a little bit of a purple. What is this? Periwinkle. Okay, so adding some of this just is kind of extending the uh, the color range out a little bit. I didn't write hue down on something like this. It's just um, hue is just the the colors that you might use. This is a little bit of a analogous color thing though, with the color glows working. But okay, so can you see that type of little slight periwinkle in here? Okay. All right, so we have that. Okay, now let's take a look at her overall color scheme in the sky, okay? Now this is where we might talk about values, okay? The values of the sky are white right here, okay? There's the imagery in the background, but see that blue right there? That is almost exclusively something about, I'd say about like that, wouldn't you say? But that's one value of blue. There, there aren't really any other darker tones, okay? It looks fine as is, but let's ex uh, ex uh, extend the value range. Okay, so this is like a mid-tone blue right here. It's like right in the middle, right? And then we have light. There's not even really kind of the center areas. It's almost like contrast light and middle ground. There's two tones in here, okay? But let's see what we can do by extending this out a little bit and extending our value range of blues. By doing so, we should be able to extend this light out too. Um, by contrast, it'll seem even lighter. The more you go from right here to up here, proportionately this light goes in the opposite direction and it seems even lighter because you have more contrast. Okay, the contrast in here is pretty good because she has such dark rocks even before I got to it though. But let's test out some of these other colors here. I'm not going to spend a super long amount of time. I don't think I am. I say that right now, but maybe I will. <laughs> um, yeah, on every aspect of this, I want to kind of move along. Okay, so let's try test out the Danube blue. It's just any kind of Marvy, I mean, uh, not Marvy, any type of um, darker blue here, okay? She might have used a little bit of it, but it's kind of untargeted a little bit. So let's go for a little bit more of a vignette, okay? Okay, you see what that's doing already? Right there, it's just a paper towel. I'm using a very light touch and just kind of adding that right here in the f corner, okay? But look at that did. See, doesn't it seem a little bit lighter there? No, you might not have seen that, so let me put it again up here. No, there's a sun, cloud with sun here too, okay? Um, it would have been good to retain some of those areas of light around those clouds, but that's fine 
because if we take the area around here in the corner and make it a little bit darker, by contrast, the areas that she's retained there of kind of her mid-tone blues will just seem, it's not going to look like they're white again, but they should look a little bit lighter, like some of that cloud is reflecting some of that lighting up there. Okay, see that right there? We've kind of directed our light source now a little bit more, too, in making that sun appear lighter, okay? In fact, let me just, let me extend this out a little bit more. Light touch, okay? And let's really direct that lighting right there, okay? Okay, here we go here. I'm going into my rocks here because if this is the color of the sky, it's the color of the light within the scene. And we can put some of that light because the light is shining off all of these different objects in here. It's not going to read like, oh my gosh, that's really, you know, a blue that's up here. But by bringing in these different colors into the different areas, you create that continuity. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of usage of a certain color across the different objects within the piece, but if you put some of it, it just creates that stronger relationship, okay? And I, I think this blue is really helping out here. So again, what we've done is we've extended that value range right there. Don't you think that's, don't you think there's kind of a stronger kind of essence in here, okay? So we've gone from right here, and we've bumped it up around to this point. Now, I, I think because that is looking like that, now see this ledge right down here is fairly dark, okay? If it was much lighter, then maybe I would stay at this blue right here, and uh, that would be fine, but I think it can really go much further. I said I wasn't going to do, but I don't know. Let's just take this one all the way in terms of the color right here, okay? This is a Marvy Navy Blue. It's just called Blue. Okay. All right. See that right there? Isn't it kind of coming together a little bit more? It's kind of tying things together in terms of a framing device. So extending the, the value range isn't just... It's not putting... You don't have to put value all over. Everything has to get dark. No, that's not it. But we're just extending the range, and you can extend it wherever you want. Okay, so here's black. I'm just using the same paper towel, so it's a little bit black-blue or a gray-blue. And I, when I'm applying this down, see, it's a very light shade of gray because it's not just a pure, you know, squash-down application of that black, okay? See this right here? I'll show you what I'm doing here. See, I'm kind of half on and half off right here. I'm just lightly spreading that out so it's not like this harsh edge. Everyone wants kind of immediate results. They want that color after going like that, <laughs> okay? So they don't do that, and they don't see it. So they go like harsh, and it's a really super harsh kind of application of it. But just think of it like you're... Think of it, whatever ink you're using, in terms of like some of these darker colors, if you're going for like a touch like this, think about it in terms of like you're applying powder, okay? Like a dry medium. That's kind of the look you're going after. If you want kind of a nice, smooth transition, okay? All right. See that right there? Kind of framing things off really well. Now let's put it on this area down here, okay? Four, two, four corners, actually. Both corners on the bottom. Okay, like this. Now, like I said, um, you don't have to go this dark, but if you retained a lot of lighter areas in here, but I think on this one, because it's fairly heavy with those darker tones throughout here, those objects, it just 
from this compositional standpoint just looks a little bit better to bring in these darker tones on the corners like that. It gives body to these upper areas so that it's not so bottom heavy down here with that object. Okay, all right, so I think this is coming along great. I really like that blue that I added in there, but then it was like, oh, okay, this one's going to need the black here. Need it and just in terms of really, I think, improving it. Okay, so I'm adding this into these trees. If anyone ever wants to send me their pieces like this and see, kind of, you know what I mean? Now this is, the thing that I'm doing too, it's not like the one answer, you know, to, to do something like this with. I'm just doing a general type of concept here in terms of my um, additions, okay? Someone else might choose something entirely different and it would look great too. It'd just be a kind of a different interpretation and that's really what scenes are about. But if you want to, you can always send me your pieces. I always say don't throw them away. I, I would hope that people would continue to work with them and see what you can develop. But if you kind of, you know, if you want to just see kind of an expedited example of something, sometimes it, it helps just to, you know, to see it done a couple times like this. I mean, th these are your pieces too, so, um, you know, you can really relate to it. It's not just me working on my own things and, you know, talking about these different concepts and whatnot, but you can send me your pieces and I, I just finish them off and I, and I send them back to you, you know, just as long as we can use them as a, as a tool. Don't stamp out one stamp to me and say, hey, finish the scene off, you know, and it's an 11 by 17 piece or something. Although I wouldn't mind doing that, but I just don't, you know, <laughs> it's better if I'm talking about kind of specific things within, a, you know, a given composition. All right, that's really coming together there. That really looks, to me, that ledge looks really super high now too in terms of uh, kind of the elevation. So see that starting to come together like that? Now too, I mean we've lost a lot of the forms of those clouds in here. I could take that cloud cumulus stamp and just stamp it darker in here so that it shows up a little bit more and I've done that in previous scenes but I think that looks fine right now. Okay so we've extended the value range of the sky area, okay, from something that was here, two points, without really much range in here, okay? So uh, what we've done is we've taken this and we've moved it out now, so we have a range of gray tones. I wouldn't say we've gone all the way to black, because the corners don't look as black as that, you know, that eagle, but it's way up here, so look at this. We've re almost, you know, we've almost doubled the value range in a given area, we've certainly extended the value range of the, the lady right here, too, by toning her in, okay? There's not a lot of light in her, okay? But, you know, there's nothing like white reflective light in there or something like that. But see, she stands with visual, you know, weight now. I mean, I, we could put a little shat, you know, a little shadow down there actually would be good, too. Um, if there's lighting in a scene, just put a little bit of tone down here, too, okay? I don't know, I just did that in brown. I, I should have done it in blue. Let's just put a little bit of that gray over it, okay? So let's, get, let's say that she's not just, you know, like a ghost there or something like that. So, you know, um, she casts a shadow, okay? Something like that. All right. So that's coming around. Let's see. Let's do. Let's put a little bit more. I like that gray there. That looks like pretty good. This is a cool gray. Number I don't know something five. Can't even see it. There's ink all over my thing now. Okay, she has two layers of uh, mountains here. Awesome job uh, layering your mountains, Carolyn. Okay, so that is the value range. I really like the kind of the the range of uh, things now. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the intensity range 
increased a little bit. See that blue glow right there? That's brighter than this kind of more pastel blue down here. So we've we've extended the intensity range a little bit, and especially on the figure. Um, you know, her clothes are largely dull, okay? But before then, it was like no color, so there was like zero, it was white, okay? With some black dots in here to represent, you know, tone. But it went from nothing to that, you know, something like that. But even that, I mean, if, if it was like down here before, just clear with no color at all, even if you take it like this, which is really small in terms of the uh, intensity level, from this to this is doubling what there was before. So, I mean, that, you know, that's, that's a lot when you double something just by adding a little, little bit of color like that. Okay, but texture, okay? Let's go, right now, everything is very sharp, okay? We're gonna be changing the value range too and, you know, adding some additional light up here. But for the most part, everything is sharp. By putting a little bit of softness into it, we can really extend that range of textures within the piece. Where's my Hero Hues? Okay, oops. Hero Hues, white pigment ink. My pad is kind of dry and used quite a bit. Okay. Oh, uh, let's do something. Let's take a photo of this piece so I can show kind of a progress. Shot. Okay. White pigment ink. Okay, where are we going to add this? You have to retain some areas of the light, okay, in order to use white pigment ink, because white pigment ink is going, is going to represent white light on these objects. And it's usually reflecting off some clouds or something, like a, like a cloud in, you know, pure blackness, you know. You can't see it. There has to be some light on it for it to show. And clouds are basically moisture in the air. So we're going to put this, you know, this atmosphere into the scene as well. So we're going to give things added depth. It's going to add lightness into certain things. And it's going to add, oh, kind of this essence of um, atmosphere in the scene. I call it the, the space in between the objects, okay? So here's a sun and here's a mountain. But if there's just nothing in between, um, that has a different feel than something in between. So I guess you can call it distance. There's far, sun, and close, mountain, okay? But there's all this space in here. So it's not like, you know, this contrasting thing. Okay, so she has retained some areas. There's a little bit of black smudge on that cloud, but we're going to get rid of that too, or that sun. So here comes some pigment ink, okay? And I'm added in it in the lighter area, but look at this. It's hitting the mountain too. Look at that illumination on the mountain already, okay? Think about this like you're applying like a powder too, okay? We don't want a thick slathering of uh, pigment ink. But see, she's put that sun really nicely there. So look at that illumination right there on the mountain okay like I said there was like a smudge of some black there so white pigment ink can really solve a lot of different issues okay I'm going to come up here into these clouds as well okay but look at look at this uh, eagle wing right here okay it's in the foreground and we have illumination on that mountain but let's illuminate this eagle as well this is the eagle soaring Look at that. See on the side of the wing, closest to the, uh, or facing the uh, sun. Doesn't that make that eagle look more dimensional? But what have you done here, too? We've taken this textural range. The eagle is very sharp, right? It's a sharp impression. Now, we've added this softness right here. Right? Doesn't that wing kind of have a softer feel to it? Look how much more dimension it is. And you've also extended the value range of a monochromatic print, all just straight black. Now you've added light to dark. So you've extended this, you've taken that eagle and you've done this, like that. And you've done this to that, okay? So I'm doing it in, in areas, but I'm also doing it in objects, okay? Look at this eagle right here. This eagle, the sun is below the eagle right here, right? This one, 
So let's go in and bottom lit, light it, okay? Because the lighting is coming from underneath, right? So we've done the same thing to that equal as well. Look at that lighting on there now. Okay. Okay, now let's look at this area in the background here. Oftentimes you see like really high peaks coming out of the clouds because they're above the cloud line. Okay, so she's retained some of those lighter areas in here. Pigment ink looks good where light meets dark. Okay, this doesn't look like a cloud down here to me, but now it does, doesn't it? Like a cloud to you now? Look at that illumination. Doesn't mean you come up and blot everything out. A lot of times what people do um, when they're first getting to use this is on this, if something is dark, but they tone everything out so they don't have the darkness anymore. They've gone all to light and they don't have sharp anymore. They've gone all to soft. So they've taken everything from here and just moved it down there, okay? But you want the range on these different um, uh, pr um, properties of the piece, okay? So see this right here where I'm adding this in? But I have some of the tree that's nice and, you know, sharp too. I'm putting this on some of these mountains right here. And it's getting softer where it's, and lighter where it's light. But it doesn't mean I've gotten rid of the sharper parts of it, okay? Like in that darkness up there, okay? So it, it means that just when you're doing these things, it's just don't do it every, over everything. A lot of times what people are doing in stamping, they're used to coloring whole areas. They're used to coloring in um, with markers and using only that full strength of ink. They're not used to using less of something, okay? So it's kind of breaking out of that mindset of totality and uniformity and going for partials and variation, okay? But look at this cloud structure in here. Look at that, how effective that is now. See this mountain right here? Let's make this mountain stand out a little bit more. Um, I, think I might even have a mask for that mountain somewhere. I don't know where it went. It was sitting on my desk for a while, but we'll just use this little post-it note, okay? I'll just go like this, and let's put a little bit of this pigment ink behind it, okay? And what this should do is it should pull that mountain out from the background mountain and make it stand out a little bit more, okay? So look at that mountain right there. Because I put that little bit of haze right back there. So I just kind of masked it off like that and toned it in. Okay, let's add a little bit more here. There's a very bright light in here. I could have toned in some more over here and made it not quite as bright, but I think that looks okay. See this tree right here? We have that light coming from above. So if we want to, we can kind of have that tree capturing some of that light, reflecting some of it, not really capturing it. And see here's some clouds down here in the valley below. Let's put some of this pigment ink and reiterate that lighting. We can put some of this on the tree here too. Look at that tree, how it really kind of glows and creates a a reflected light essence. This is really fun doing um, these pieces like this. Again, I there, there really aren't scenes that I've seen where kind of something has just gone off the rails, you know. Some of them, you know, have gone uh, a little bit off the rails, but not completely off the rails. Like if someone just darkened into everything, you know what I mean? It would be kind of hard to um, do anything to it unless it was, you know, we were able to do some kind of subtractive process on it. But um, most of the times it's about extending the ranges of things. Depth, intensity, value, um, sharpness. And I mean... Those little things, I mean, they're easy to do, but um, just so effective to do.
but I really enjoy doing these things on uh, other people's pieces because um, it's you know it's different for me because everyone kind of stamps a little bit differently but I can see also see if these things you know apply and they usually do um, these different um, principles and concepts what I'm usually doing though when I'm doing a, a scene is I have these things in idea that I will utilize something I, I usually don't know how something is going to end up looking in the end result but I know the processes I'm going to take um, a scene through or the things that I could do potentially I don't have to do all of them but um, and you know I'll do I'll approach the scene with that in mind but a scene like this where they didn't you know think they'd be utilizing something or someone wouldn't be utilizing it in their pieces to be more accurate um, they've gone ahead and done things accordingly okay but I can see if I can um, put these um, different types of uh, applications of media into the scene after the fact you know where something wasn't totally conceived with the that process being utilized in mind all right so coming around there okay I almost forgot um, we'll utilize another kind of textural method here a lot of times when I start doing these different types of methods it's like oh I forgot about that one I could have used that okay I'm putting some of this mist around the figure oftentimes uh, when you're up at super high elevations you're kind of in the clouds a lot of times if you're out hiking um, it can be kind of dangerous if you're kind of off trail and you go into high elevation hikes and um, you run into these things called whiteouts where you can't see anything I've been in that situation a little bit when kind of the storm was coming in this one area it wasn't a long hike at all but it just really comes to show you just how kind of that lack of visibility can really affect uh, affect oneself okay so I put her in a little bit of essence too do you see that and I put some of that cloud kind of coming over that bank right there so I've extended the textural range of this ridge now we have something soft in there instead of all 100% sharpness all right um, Okay, a lot of people are asking me about this pen. It's a Meowsen acrylic painter. It's a 0.7 millimeter white acrylic pen, or white paint pen. I put all the things that I use in the description section below these videos, so if you kind of expand on those areas, you'll see what uh, whatever I've used. Okay, so textural range. Sharp, soft, right? We've added a lot of the softness, and in doing so, because it's white pigment ink, we've added more light into it as well. White paint pens, okay? We're adding textural range. Little tiny dots are, are certainly a texture. Value. We have these darker areas, okay? But by putting these little dots into it, or in the light areas too, we've extended the value range by adding white dots to a scene okay they might be very tiny but they could be very effective okay all right so if you're shading areas the darker areas of a rock with darker inks if you're doing something with white that would be used for the highlights so you put that on the top sides of things all right you have to shake up this pen and be, you know before you use it every time otherwise it's very very translucent and maybe I need to shake it up even more. I think a couple of my pens are starting to go dry I've used them so much hey if a pen good like this goes dry on you that's a good thing though right because um, that means you've utilized it and without fail it's it's worked and you've utilized it into its you know completely empty incarnation okay so um, these areas on the um, mountain there's some ridges in here that have some highlights on them as long as those areas didn't get colored in what I'm doing is I'm just reiterating them so on the top sides of them I'm adding these little highlights okay 
If you've darkened it, though, don't put too many highlights in there because you're saying that no light is hitting that area. Okay, see that? Uh, okay, I need to zoom in. I hate zooming in. Then I watch my videos later, and it's like, oh, I was working off screen. Even though I try to stay conscious of it, I, I do get into my scenes, and I, I don't know, I tend to forget or something. I just get so lost in the process of creating the scene. All right, now that ridge in there got kind of <laughs> dark. That really stands out too much, so I'm just going to wipe it off like that, okay? That was too much. Uh, now this, see this little area right here? It's lighter than that, right? So I can probably put a few little highlights on it like that, right? So that was a good example. It was a little bit too much. Uh, too much darkness, so that really stood out by contrast too much. Okay, now in here you can add as much as you want because this is, area in here is so light to begin with, but there are some ridges that I can kind of add a little bit of highlighting to and down here. I try not to change what uh, Carolyn's done too much, you know, in terms of the spirit of it and light, light and dark. I just kind of added that overall vignette around the, the piece uh, in terms of coloring, okay? My whole idea isn't just to completely change some, you know, the spirit of something that someone else has done, but just to kind of enhance it with a couple um, techniques or extra processes, or the same process, just more of it that she's already done. Okay, let's see that right in there. This area down here gets really light, so we're not going to be able to see any of this um, highlighting anyway. So, uh, oh, I was almost I was working off screen. You can do a line like this too, okay. All right, so on some of these, now this, most of these rocks are super dark, so there's not very much grayscale, okay, so I'm not going to use too much of this right here. On this line, I, I can use a little bit of highlighting too, something like that. See where those little dots like that stand out? We've gone from value, like over here it's dark, and by putting a dot into it, you've extended the value range of that area or that object all the way to this because it's white. So that's a huge jump in value there. Okay, look at those. Doesn't that lighting really stand out to you in terms of these little dots? The darker it is, the less kind of highlighting you would use, or don't use any, because it stands out too much, okay? Look at that lighting within these areas right here. Doesn't that look really cool in terms of the, the lighting on that area? It just looks like and you're putting kind of a little sparkle into some areas. I'm putting some in here because she left a little bit of light in there, so it's affording me the ability to add some of this light because she's retained some of this slight light behind this tree down here, okay? But look at that now. It doesn't, isn't this place really rich? Now see, without that, it's just all dark, but that is some really nice lighting. It's a lighting passageway through here. See that? Now, I, what you do is you kind of hold this at an arm's distance. Now, I, I probably used a lot more highlighting in the early years when I was using white paint pens and kind of discovering them. I kind of went crazy. I don't know, if you're doing it and you're having fun, go crazy. But I keep things slightly more subtle, maybe, maybe, these days. So, see that highlighting throughout here? Maybe that's it, but isn't that kind of like little sparkly little bits, too, from a textural standpoint? It's like nature's like lighting or light show. Okay, now let's take a look at this tree here. I think the tree looks fine as is, but let's extend, extend the textural range of this. This is kind of soft right now, right? So watch this. That's softness. Now, these little sparkly little white dots are sharp. So suddenly you've gone from a tree that was monochromatic, black, it stood out in the foreground, and I think it looked really good, but now... This one tree has dark 
it has lighter or lightness, it has sharpness, and it has softness. And it also has, within that sharpness, we keep extending the, everything out. We keep, you know, the visual language. Now we have sharpness in the softness in terms of that little sparkly light. But look how much dimension that tree has now from before. Okay, now look at this tree right here. Okay. I didn't put, take this one into so much softness because it's darker up here, okay? It's lighter down here around these clouds, so I lightened that. But let's add that sharpness back into the softness here and also extend the lighting, okay? So the lighting facing that sun right there on the side of the tree, facing the light. So see, that doesn't that tree kind of stand in a little bit more? I mean, you could have a dot or two around here or something like that if you want to, but something like that. Now that tree, to me, looks a lot more dimensional. Oh, okay, now see that tree goes down here too. Okay, so let's follow suit. I always have th these highlights on the side of the branches that are kind of facing that light. That tree gets lost in that uh, the background of the mountain, but I can kind of pull it out a little bit more with the use of some highlights on some of those branches. Okay, so see that kind of tree starting to stand out a little bit more? Okay. I still go overboard sometimes with these white dots and the pigment ink and whatnot. But, hey, I always tell, used to tell people in my classes, if they weren't sure if they wanted to do something or not, my recommendation was always to go for it. Because if they couldn't tell, but their inclination was kind of there to do it, it's always better to test it out. Plus, you know, always with something like this you can put on one dot at a time it's not like you have to put in 50 before you take a look and see how it's affecting everything but always go a little bit over because if you're always kind of putting the brakes on something then it's kind of like a metaphor for things maybe when it comes to scenery too or stamping maybe you're always kind of pulling back uh, on the reins before something achieves its full kind of potential so it's always better, better, and then if you do too much, then you'll know how much to, uh, you know, you'll know better the next time around how far to go. But that's always kind of better than to never kind of, uh, you know, achieving or uh, kind of moving towards the, for your own eye, the ideal kind of uh, uh, resolution or stopping point of the scene. Okay, so... There, that is. I mean, I can add more things into it, but I think that looks pretty good. Um, just in terms of that visual language right there. Okay, that we've utilized. Um, scene one. The vignette pulled things together from a compositional standpoint. The vignette is darker. It made the lighter areas seem lighter. That sun still isn't standing out tremendously. Oh, it had that little kind of black smudge on it. Let's kind of go in and, uh, I don't know, add in some white into that area. Don't add too much of it, otherwise it looks too harsh. Oh, and if you want to, like on the, some of these clouds, you can put some of these highlights as well. But... Um, uh, we've extended the uh, the visual range of so many different things in here. So texture, um, value, and intensity. Okay. We've given visual mass and weight to things by darkening in the shadows and fleshing them in, and then going back into those uh, same types of objects um, where it called for it with some additional white pigment ink to really kind of put the finishing touches on so many of these different areas here. Kind of adding a little bit more white in that area.
um, the pigment ink dries dark. Okay, so you have to kind of when it dries, if it's if it's too light and you need a little bit more um, ink, go ahead and add it in. You know, put another layer down, but try not to add too thick of a layer. Just keep layering and letting it dry and adding more uh, layering, okay? Kind of let it build. All right, so there we go. All right, so scene one. Let's see, what should we do on scene two? Uh, or which one should we do for scene two? Let's use this one right here, okay? Um, a very narrow... Um, value range in here okay she has values in that covered bridge beautifully done all those different tones multiple different tones Looks like she has some white up there a little bit and she's used it here and there but definitely the pathway the road leading up to the um the covered bridge got very colored in okay intensity wise it's all pretty bright colors okay so intensity, we're kind of in this range right here, but there's not too much dull in here. A little bit on the rooftop right there. Okay, but it, there's not a lot down here. Uh, the value, it's almost all kind of mid-tones to darker tones, okay? And from a textural standpoint, this is very textured and, uh, I don't know, it's too mono-textured too. The trees all look the same. There's no kind of a modeling. Well, it is, but it's just very narrow. There's some beautiful tones in here. So we're going to try to take advantage of the things that have been done in here, but not lose the strengths, okay? And on this one, like I said, I think it's all on glossy cardstock, so I don't know if I can remove any of these uh, tones on here. One of the beautiful things about alcohol inks is the blender tool. Um, can often remove. So let me see if I can do that. Uh, the glossy cardstocks, the alcohol inks tend to blend in a little bit. Oh, wait, let me take a picture of this uh, piece first. Or did I already do that? I think I already did that. Okay, so I'm just trying to put... It takes a while. It doesn't... This isn't like an eraser. It's like gone, you know. You kind of have to lay some of this tone down like this and it starts to put the alcohol inks back into solution. Actually, I think it is doing that. See that? Where it's getting, oh, sorry. Where it's getting lighter as I do this is because more of that alcohol ink's going on there and it's dissolving some of those inks. So see, immediately right now, I am kind of achieving kind of a lighter area right there. So look at that tree already. Doesn't that look so much more dimensional? It looked like this before. So she has some darks and lights in here now. Um, but let me see if I can do something, okay? This is going to take forever with my uh, blender pen. And my blender pen is going to have to absorb so much ink if I do that. So let me get that out of there. Some of that brown. And I have um, some rubbing alcohol here. I'm going to use some of these tips here from... Uh, Moon and the Maker, uh, Moonlight Tint and Hue Duo Ink Packs. I'm also going to try some um, um, Q-tips, cotton swabs, okay? These are kind of cool here. They sent those to me to use with their uh, Moonlight Duo pigment ink pads. Okay, so let's use the... Uh, Q-tip first, though, okay? Rubbing alcohol. There, there's probably solutions, you know, that you can use, like your blender pen refill inks, which is just the straight alcohol binder, but I'm just using some rubbing alcohol here. Rubbing alcohol, I mean, it should kind of dig into uh, other alcohol inks, even if, you know, it's not the same exact type of thing. Okay, so let's go for this. Let's let's create a little bit more value range in here, okay? So moving from something all dark right here, and let's move it back this way a little bit. Even if I get a little bit off, it might be doubling the textural range, uh, the value range. See that right there? See it? It's just, it's getting lighter right there. 
don't worry about. I'm not doing this, you know, completely very strategically. I just want to. I don't want everything mono value. So, which one? It's not like you're going to remove some ink off something and say, "Oh my God, I moved removed it off that branch. It should have been the branch next to it." No, not like that. We're just going for variation. Okay. So see that right there? That one's starting to come out a little bit more. We're starting to reveal some of that ink. It's not revealing a lot, okay? It's not just getting completely light, but it's getting lighter. This is what often happens with um, toning, okay? Um, you can see how much ink is coming off of here. Um, in the, in the mid-tones and darker tones quite often, people kind of lose that... Um, they kind of revert to whole coloring types of applications where they're just coloring in everything uniformly. They're filling in a space, okay? As opposed to thinking of the objects as more kind of dimensional and varied. Like my hand here isn't just all one tone of something like that. There's shadows and highlights within it. And that's the same thing for objects out there. Unless they're like a building or something like the side of a something that's flat. Things are often rounded, so they have different types of lighting on them, which means that there's going to be value variation happening. Oops. I gotta take my son to piano lessons right now. Just when I was having some alcohol on a Q-tip fun. So that kind of light starting to kind of come about like that. It was all this color before. So I think this bodes pretty well for the uh, the path there, don't you? Now this is kind of dulling the colors I see, okay? But we can add some brightness back into it and work on that intensity. Uh, the intensity uh, scale, you know, bright to uh, bright to dull. One thing about alcohol inks, you can kind of, unless it's on a matte paper or something completely absorbent, you can, to a small extent, do a little erasing. It's not really erasing; it's more lifting. Yeah, I see that kind of you see that variation kind of happening in the trees now. We got all that ink coming off of here. Okay. Pathway, visual lead ins. It's good to leave a road or Pathway of light, like a like a stream or something like that, lighter. So I'm going in here. And we'll create that visual lead in. Oh, I see she has the aspen tree here in the foreground. Okay, we'll let this dry and I'll come back to the lesson after I get back. So I'm kind of making it a little bit lighter. It got pretty heavy down here, though. Okay. Okay, I am back, and we are continuing to recover um, light on the value scale. But we're, one of the things that we're losing here is we're also losing intensity and the brightness but the thing about this is we can always add the intensity and brightness back into it but we're just going to do it with lighter uh lighter values okay instead of going all into the mediums and darks so and one of the things about kind of the doing this kind of alcohol rubbing alcohol bleaching is that it it kind of leaves a little bit of a, a different type of surface it's kind of dull so if, I don't know if this, yeah, this is glossy paper. So it looks, the paper tends to look kind of satin or if not matte almost when you go over and do this. I don't, I don't think it's actually removing a 
Although it might be, it might be removing some of the uh, the coating that um, that's inherently on glossy cardstock. I'm not sure. Okay, so see this right here. So we're starting to. I'm not trying to remove everything. We're not just taking off everything. I'm just trying to reveal some lighter areas within areas. Okay. So here's another thing. Like, see this area down here, that water. Um, I think it looks pretty good, but I think it could. It could stand to use some value changes. So instead of having like all dark in green um, and all, you know, kind of a uniform value in the water, what you do is on all the things like on a modeled um, bridge like this, since we are saying that there is lighting coming from above and there are changes of value like that, we have to kind of have um, multiple values in all of the different areas here. So in that water down there, um, it could stand to really use some additional values down there. And see, like in the rocks too, there's some rocks down there. Um, the rocks are kind of lighter on top and darker on the side. So I'm going to kind of reclaim some of that value. So see that right down there? It's kind of getting a little bit lighter. It's not, uh, it's not just kind of a a straightforward removal. It, it gets a little bit lighter, okay? And like I said, you know, that's one of the fun things about alcohol inks on glossy, on glossy uh, cardstock, but also on glossy photo paper, especially. On photo paper, it really moves because, I don't know, I, I, I guess all that ink is very, very surface oriented. So it really just kind of stays up there. Okay, so on the top sides of some trees, um, there are lighter areas within the trees. Let me see if I can find a similar stamp. Um, okay, so see these tree structures right here. There are lights and darks on it, right? So the thing that I like to do is I like to bring different values into that when I'm coloring it. But see, if it's lighter on there, then I don't bring like the darkest of colors to color those lighter areas so that we can retain um, volumes within this and it's not just like a flat tree to be treated uniformly in terms of value okay and it just makes it now you can treat it uniformly if it's in a light tone because then you'll be able to see through it but it's the mid tones and darker tones where I do put the breaks on coverage okay see this down here this all gets really super dark okay I'm not quite sure what impressions are down there. The colors are very rich though. See this right here? There's all kinds of different colors in there. So that's um, a really good application, but I would just put the brakes on some of those um, of the lightest, uh, darker of tones. Okay. So there's right here where I, we're kind of introducing changes in value down there. And that's the way things look just in general. Okay. There's different values on things depending on the light, how light is hitting it. But the good thing is, when it comes to applications and how we're, we are describing these things with inks, it doesn't really matter what you leave light and dark as just as long as there's kind of um, variation, okay? Because it's not like, oh, that tree wouldn't be, or that branch wouldn't be light, the other one would be light, okay? It's not like that. There's just some variation that you want to utilize. Okay, now this isn't the normal process I go through. I'm really doing some kind of removal here. The thing is, is just not to go so heavy with the uh, those inks to begin with. Um, the darker ones, you kind of use them, but you use them kind of more, a little bit more selectively. Lighter tones, you can really give kind of a a pretty wide coverage. Okay. But we'll see what we can do here. All right. So we're already getting some kind of nice oscillation of um, values in here. It's kind of interesting when I go like that. Look how much brighter those tones are. Okay, so that means that when I see that, it means that if I spray seal this, I think those intense colors will kind of show through as if this was wet, okay? 
So I will brighten it up, but I don't. I probably don't need to, to the extent that I maybe will just right now. But we'll see how it goes. You know, it's hard to tell how something will look. Um, just if I haven't done it before. So I haven't done this kind of extensive amount of, kind of a selective, uh, you know, removal of uh, of uh, inks before. Okay, so that. Removed all quite a bit. Okay, I might even actually be removing some of the uh, the impression, but the impression list still looks really strong, so I think that's okay. All right. Now this alcohol, alcohol dries really fast, so I am assuming that I can just go right into it and start coloring. Um, I don't know if the some of it is so, you know soaking into the paper. And. Uh, You know, making the pulp of the paper kind of moist. But I don't know if that will really matter or not. Okay, so we've revealed tones. It's still very monochromatic, okay? Or monotone, all right? But let's play around with intensity right now, okay? Everything is kind of looking a little bit dull, except for her bridge that I didn't touch, okay? So, what you do is you just kind of go back into your lightest of tones. Let's go back in with some yellows here, okay? And we'll try to introduce some of that brightness again. Now, just inherently it looks really kind of strange. I'm going to try to keep this generally to the... Um, darker areas to middle tone areas. I, I might not give a full coverage. It's really more so with the with the uh, with the medium and darker tones, though. Okay. So the, this is a pretty bright color, as you can see. Okay. I'll see if this is kind of drying dull or not as I go along. It looks actually pretty good. I, I could probably almost just only color with yellow for this, and I think it would look okay. Okay, see so those tones starting to come about? I'm, the intensity of it, the intensity of the tones. Okay, let's try some of this green maybe in the green area down here. Now this green area, I never really was able to get too um, light. It just, the ink removal process didn't fully um, take place in those areas. It, it was just too kind of worked into the uh, thing, but I think that'll be fine. Working some of this green up into those uh, trees, okay. It's a very bright green. It doesn't make it look green because the green's over the top of all those other colors. And let's try to go with some nice bright orange, okay. And again, this is over the top of a lot of other colors up there, so it's not really looking very orange-ish. But hopefully we get a little bit of the brightness up there from that orange, okay in spots. Okay. And why don't we go all the way to red? Yeah, it's just a little bit like watermelon or something. It needs a little intensity of this bright red. We'll get some of it down here in the, uh, the grassy area as well. All right, stands out way too much. So the thing is, is it, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you just go back to your um, lighter tones and then you blend in those darker ones that are a little bit patchy looking, okay? So I'm just going in with that yellow and I'm spreading out those little blobs of uh, red that I've uh, um, applied.
Okay, look at okay. Let me do something too. Um I think we can use some crisp impressions of some I'm just gonna use some tiny rocks because this whole area in here gets a little bit muddled, okay? So I'm going to add some sharpness through the use of imagery. See that right there? So we're adding crisp into soft, because it, it got a little soft down there. Now, like I said, I, um, I think that um, white pigment ink will really play a big role. And spraying this, it's going to take on a different overall kind of spirit in that area, in, in terms of the textural chain differences. All right, so let's see. Let's go in with some additional... Just a very pale, here's apricot, okay? Let me go into this area down here. Okay, from a textural standpoint, that's kind of matching up a little bit more because I'm putting this new layer of alcohol down there. Okay. Okay. Seeing these rocks, I like putting in a little bit of a shadow underneath some of these rocks. So it's varying that blue area touch, okay. This area down here is so dark. But, okay, let me see, let me show you what else we can do. Actually, before I move into some crisp impressions right out here, that will make that look a little bit lighter because it got so dark. I thought I was going to use these. These are a little bit too small. I needed to do a lot more removal, so I won't use any of those on here. Okay, let's take a look and see what we can do. Okay, so what we did was um, everything was all super dark values up here, like right along here, I would say, okay? Right in here. There was almost no lights down here, so everything got pushed all and crammed into this little area right here. We were looking pretty good though as far as our intensity goes. Everything was really intense, but it was all in here. There wasn't anything dull. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be dull in that kind of autumn type of uh, scenario, but I think it will help. There wasn't a lot I could do with it though because I did all that removal, but from a textural standpoint, uh, moving it into the softness, we're gonna move things down into the light and we'll push things down into dull. This is what white pigment ink can do. It can do all that in one fell swoop, okay? Doesn't mean we're gonna run it over everything, but if we utilize it and uh, we can utilize it over some of it, I think it'll really uh, kind of give this um, kind of a visual boost, okay? All right, so I think it can, we can have some of it coming in here maybe down here a little bit. We need a little bit of a diversity, and especially down over in this section. So see where we, uh, she's retained some of that lightness down there, and it's a little bit light right here. Those are the areas that I'm afforded, and the sky up, uh, area up there coming over the tops of the trees. So let's see what we can do. Uh, let me take a photo of this real quick. Okay, uh, just to keep some pigment ink from going over this. She has these folded cards. I'm going to fold this over so when I apply pigment ink up here, it won't get on, you know, the back side of that. Okay. I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to see some uh, dramatic changes here. Okay. All right, now, things are pretty dark, so I think this is going to have a pretty dramatic change, so I just want it to go nice and slow look at that light coming over the top of the tree i don't know maybe that's a little bit too much but like i said before this dries darker than what it looks like than when it's freshly applied okay you see that coming in see i'm not putting it over everything okay I want to go with some uh, some paint pens on here too, and that's really going to change the spirit. But I think I'll do this first. Eh, I don't know. Maybe I should have gone with the paint pens first, but I don't know. This change right here is going to be so dramatic. I thought. 
I don't know, I wanted to get right into it, but look at those trees there. Look how deep in terms of uh, spatially they look. Don't they look really dimensional now? Like that? With light, that light hitting them from above. Okay, let's add some of this down here. Let's see that there's a little bit of this foggy mist at the base of some of these trees. Put some of it in my water too. We're actually kind of, it looks like we're changing the time of day. Okay, so what are we doing? From a textural standpoint, doesn't that look really soft? So everything is really super crisp and intense. We have duller colors up there now. We have lighter colors and we have softer colors. One, you know, one, two, three. All that, okay, just with one kind of technique or methodology, okay? Look at the impressions now that covered bridge. Doesn't it look real dimensional now in terms of that space? That kind of fog kind of rolling in. Kind of changes the emotional type of spirit of the piece, doesn't it? I have some of this creeping in here. So you work from the light and you taper it, okay, into the darker areas. Like that. Okay. It's a little bit lighter over here too. So I'm working it in from those areas. Like that, like so. I really need to get into some of that uh pathway because it's just so um, kind of monotone in there so but we want that richness but we just want the variation um, in there so I am going to go in with a little bit kind of that mist right in there where there wasn't any lightness I just kind of manufactured the lightness okay same thing over here. Oops, I'm putting my finger in all the white pigment ink up top here. It's still pretty moist, okay? It doesn't dry real fast, but that's what it allows us to kind of really spread it around. Okay. Putting it at the base of this, uh, these trees right here. Don't put it everywhere. Oscillate, because by doing... Okay, by adding all of this, you don't want to lose all of this up here. So if you put it over everything, see if you put all your dark and medium tones over everything, everything, then we lose all this. Now if you put all the lightness that you're doing to create all this, and you put it over all your darks, then you've just only, suddenly you've moved your range of all of your uh, visual um, kind of properties from here. And you've moved them all down here. Now, if you're doing it purposefully to make like a really foggy day, then so be it. But do it kind of purposeful because that's what you have in mind rather than accidentally and saying, oh my God, I lost all my color. Okay. So all that means is as you're doing this, kind of hold it at an arm's distance once in a while and take a look and see what it looks like. Okay. Otherwise, we're kind of focusing like this all the time and you know, we're adding things in a very small little area. So I'm going to kind of pull out and take a look at the overall and kind of get a good get a impression of how what you're doing is affecting the overall because it's easy to see um, what you're doing in kind of the details by looking at things very close up. So... Um, the overall is really important. Kind of arm's distance. Assessments. Okay. I'm just kind of toning this in from down here, see that like that.
Okay, let's take a look here and see. Now, I'm going a little bit or a lot overboard just because I, I really needed to lean on this um, process right here to really expand out on all of those different uh, visual properties. Okay. But I think it looks pretty good. It's giving us a different kind of looking scene now. And there's a different spirit to it. I'm get, you know, I like doing these because also when you're, you're working on someone else's piece, it's like, this is like a collaborative um, exercise. So I get different looks than what I normally would have um, had, had I just, you know, had I done this whole piece from, from start to finish. Okay, so see how I'm really getting into that road and kind of changing, expanding, not really changing. Well, I guess it is changing, but it's really expanding on the textural and uh, visual range of that whole area, which was a pretty big area, so it was kind of important to have that um, um, diversity within that space, okay? All right, so we have that now. Okay. So see what we've done is we've increased all of that, right? But I'm going to do something, um, two more things. I'm going to add that, like that white paint in there. And I'll add some colored dots too. But I'll also add in, so we have all of this over here, but I'm going to add in some extra foreground imagery in um, black pigment ink, and it'll add... Um, texture, um, not really intensity, but value into these softer areas. So it'll really push pull um, the contrast within all of those things again. So, and foreground things like that, it, it's a really easy thing to do. And it it's so effective in terms of um, a compositional type of uh, um, aspect, trick, whatever. Um, in our pieces. It can really expand on things in very specific areas, not just the overall. Okay, so... Um, oh, I'm thinking I, I'm out of my... I'm out of my green right here. This green pen is dry. But I have some purple, and I think I have a pink, pastel pink, paint pen, tongue twister. I don't know where it went though. Where did my pink paint pen go? Uh, I've seen some of your workstation areas and A lot of your work areas look like mine. <laughs> it's hard, hard to find stuff. Now I've seen some of yours too, and it's like, uh, you know, extremely organized, very impressive looking. But I don't know where my pink paint pen went. It's all the same thing. Hmm. Unless I let my son borrow it when he was doing that. Anyway, I, don't know, I didn't put it back. All right. Okay, so anyway. Highlights in the light areas. Now this pen might really stand out because this a lot of the textures on this got really uh quite um dark, so I won't yeah, I'm gonna be careful about the usage of this, okay? But this is adding in um Highlights, okay, they're crisp, okay, so from a textural standpoint, they're sharp. So I'm adding these sharp little details into an otherwise a pretty dull, um, or s sharp into soft, yeah, a soft area, because that whole area in there got quite soft, but look at that texturing, 
okay? It looks kind of busy when you look at it a bit close, but this is what it looks like right here. It just looks like kind of little, you know, crisp shimmers. And I'm putting this on the top sides of objects, okay? It's really standing out quite a bit. Okay, now if you put a few, it looks kind of out of place because you didn't kind of continue that uh, type of element that's happening in one object through the rest of the scene. So you kind of have to kind of add on. doesn't mean you have to use a ton of it everywhere, but I would use some of it everywhere, okay? Because you're saying that's what's happening within the scene. It was just like that lady um, kind of, uh, she needed a little bit of um, kind of visual weight and finishing off just like any rock would. So we're making these objects look a lot more dimensional this way, okay? See that kind of lighting through out there? Let's see when you can start to see it. There we go. Look at that. Kind of concentrate and condense the dots a little bit more, or a lot more, in the lighter areas. And then where it's dark, maybe, I don't know, even like two dots or something like that. Okay, so down here on the path, I'm going to put a few little highlights down here. Like I said, it gets very, very busy. I don't want to use too much of this because it's so dark down there, okay? But it's important to have some of this somewhere um, if you've lit an area a certain way then have kind of that similar type of lighting structure somewhere else, okay? Or throughout even, okay? So see that? From a textural standpoint, it looks kind of it's getting a little busy down here, but that's okay. See that? So again, we've in our soft areas, we've added this little dot, and it's all the way up here in sharp because a dot and paint white, you know, or paint like that in these areas creates this huge amount of contrast in those areas. I'm kind of doing a dull little color right here in terms of my. Uh, and this is a pastel pen, and it's also light, a crisp little thing of light within that dark space, okay? So it makes the dark seem darker and the light seem even lighter. Okay, eh, let's see. This is, I wish I knew where my pink, pink pen went. It's probably right in front of my face. Eh, maybe I'll trip. No, nah, that's not too good. I'll see if I can use some of this green, maybe. I'm not sure. I might not need to. Okay, so here's a little bit of violet, okay. I'll just kind of intersperse that. I don't want to add too much of it. But it just kind of makes for a little bit more of a varied texture in terms of color. Actually, that looks really good. Purple, hmm. A little bit of purple down here, cluster it here and there. It's This purple really isn't very light, so it's not really adding too much light into dark, unless I put it into a darker area. Okay. There we have that. Now we can go over that, those little dots, with some additional white Pay, uh, pigment ink, if we want to. It just kind of tones things down a little bit. I, I, I probably won't need to, though. I can tell this whole thing is getting... All my white pigment ink is kind of um, dulling out a little bit and getting darker, so I'm going to put on a fresh coat and go a little bit lighter in the areas where I wish it to be a little bit lighter, okay? Just so it stands out. We want a little bit of range in our foggy elements as well. You want some areas to be a little bit lighter and a little bit darker, okay? Just like with color. You have some colors a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. When using the same color too, you know, you can have like a, a very light version of a given blue or something and a very light version, dark version uh, dull, intense, whatever. Okay, so see this right here? It's kind of pushing the, the contrast a little bit more. 
Okay. Now this also, to me, from a textural standpoint, it's getting a little bit too much. But this is, you know, I don't just stop right here though. You know, there's other things that we can do to really push um, kind of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, I don't know what it is, the goals or whatnot of the piece, okay? All right, here's some leafless pine right here. Things are getting pretty busy, so I want kind of a this bony looking pine tree that we can see through. Um, let's try my leaves stamp. Leaves stamps are done with a different density on here and whatnot. Okay. Hmm, this one before it was folded. I'll see if I can get a good impression on here. I don't like something stamping on that folded section right there because I might not get a good crisp print, but I'll try to, okay. Um, hmm. Let me put a piece of scratch paper right in there too, like that. Okay, I'm, I want to go for a, as dark of an impressions as I can get. I hope this is flat. Here's the leave stamp. Okay, I'll put it right over here. On this one right here, I am utilizing it. I, I'm hoping it prints over that all that alcohol ink too. Now on photo paper, this never ever dries, but I think this is glossy cardstock. I'm not sure though, she might be doing it on. I hope this isn't photo paper because that might not dry, so I'll have to like heat set it and what whatnot. Or spray seal, uh, we'll see how it goes. Now this one is something that you don't want to put these versifying <laughs> black impressions down and then oh I need to put more of that white pigment ink over it because that's going to be wet for a while okay see those leaves right there okay all right how's that look isn't that fun we really pushed um, depth with that. But look at this. Sharp over soft, dark over light. Look at the um, kind of the, the range of value here and of texture here. It's sharp over soft, dark over light. Okay. So there's a lot of um, visual variety within that space now. Okay. And plus, it was also real busy back there, so it wasn't looking too good. But all you do is you just have to stamp something kind of in the foreground. It doesn't mean complete coverage and obliteration. Everything in the background is still there, but you just have something so much closer to you now. So this area in the background becomes much less um, apparent, and it just becomes kind of more, I don't know, blended in with the surrounding area. Okay, this is the reed stamp. It's a nice bony, you know, thin image. But again, it's nice and crisp here to go against something that's a lot, you know, softer and kind of blurred out and muted. But that looks good in the background now. See, it, it's kind of a weakness if it's only that. But now, by putting something crisp and close next to you or it the whole thing that this area in here that area's weakness has now become a strength because it's contrasting against the item that you have in the foreground like this so let's take a look at this right here see that right now all that down there looks pretty good against that okay so we're playing contrasts against one another. 
That's what I'm saying. I love this card now. But see, it's like you just have to kind of see it through. And these are not, it's not like a specific thing. Oh, I had to use that. Or, I, you know, oh, I can't do it because I don't have this pen. All I'm doing is I'm playing contrast ones, you know, against one another. And as you do this, you know, there are certain things that you can do on every card to achieve this, you know. Crisp foreground imagery, highlights, white pigment ink. You can practically do it on any type of medium, too. Um, it doesn't have to be alcohol inks on... Glossy, it could be whatever. Okay. All right, let's take a look here and see. All right. We can even put a little figure down there, huh? Walking towards the bridge, if we wanted to. I don't think I will. But look at this area up here. I, my favorite area is this area up here now. I think. I like this area down here, too, but look at that rich coloring. I, I have no idea what this will look like if it's spray sealed. I might lose some of that kind of misty type of effect, but maybe it would blend in even more and incorporate it into the, the surrounding area um, a little bit better. I'm not sure, but I think that looks pretty good. All right. So, I mean, it really changed, though, that's for sure, from the beginning um, period to the end. So, like I said, if people see certain um, segments or whatever, chapters of their scene's development as the end result in so many times, in my pieces too, I, I if I see like the middle region um, as like a failed completion, then you'll, you're never going to see things through um, to the full completion of it. So I would say don't throw them away, okay, even, even if you do them later, because you might kind of learn and develop your processes and say, oh, you know, I'm gonna go back to that piece that I did before, with your, your new kind of repertoire of skills that you've developed, and then you can bring these to their complete form. But I love that, uh, all those color schemes in here. So, uh, I don't know, yeah. I, I wasn't quite sure, but um, I just stuck with my, I don't know, tried and true processes, and I think it came through really good on this one. Um, uh, Coloring, <laughs> um, sharp and soft highlights, okay, uh, paint pens, pigment ink, and over the top of that, you go with your foreground and darker elements, okay. But look at that white pigment ink doing the trick in there, huh? All right, so that was really, really fun. Uh, to do and watch kind of uh, develop. I'm watching these things too. I, I never know how they're going to come out um, Just like anyone else so and you know, I'm not sure in a lot of times. So oh I almost forgot about this. So I had that white paint pen too So if you want a little bit more contrast in some areas we can do some of that look at see the down here in these rocks it's still fairly light down there, so it didn't get terribly dark, so I'm going to put just a few highlights on the tops of some of these rocks right in here. It can kind of take it because that area is light enough. If it's really dark, then you can't do this because it would stand out too much. So in some lighter areas, you can add in those little types of textural changes like that. See those rocks down there? I just did a little bit of a dot on the tops of the rocks. So those dogs, uh, rocks look a little bit more dimensional, like that. You can do it. She uh, she pulls out her fences. I noticed, and that looks really good on her on her other cards that I've seen. Um, so I can put a little, you know, highlights on some of this fence right here. So the fence is painted white, maybe. Like 
that. Um, yeah, and some of these bricks, you can put a little highlight. If it's dark, though, don't do that. <laughs> it's just, I, I this white would be too, it would be too apparent down in those areas, so I'm not going to do it over there. So anyways, yeah, there we go. Pretty nice. So Carolyn, I hope you like our scene. I just did my little tricks on it, but you did the bulk of the coloring. Um, so this was kind of an evolution, too, um, of her piece. Okay, so she's not doing that now. You know, the kind of the, um, with the mid and darker tone over coloring. Because, you know, here's a piece right here. I mean, that's fantastic. Look at that variation in there. That one's just going to take, you know, very little... Um, in there because I didn't have to undo uh, kind of anything. Just a little bit of additions to that one. I think that one's going to be ready to go. But I'll show you what that, you know, what we can do there. Okay, so there's the white in there. I've added a little bit into some of those trees. It's not just a few dots here and there, okay? See, it looks kind of crazy when you look at it um, up close. It looks like Christmas lights, right? Not that that's bad. Let's see, like that down there. But See, when you look at it really at arm's distance, like that, you know, it just reads as highlights, okay? Okay, all righty. I'm going to stop working on that one. It's so fun. All right, so two down, one to go. I'll do a lot of the things that I did on here on this piece, but much more minimally, though, okay? So let's take a look here. Well, let me take a look at this one, see how this one's doing in terms of how it looks after it dried. Okay, so we have those two. Uh, wait, here, I didn't need to take another picture of this one. Okay, beautiful piece right here. Look at the variation and richness in uh, tones in the grass. And she was saying, hey, you know, I, I said, hey, you can use some uh, gel pens up there. And she says, hey, I did. Okay. And if you just notice them. Okay, see right there? They're in this area. It's be I think those, are, those look like metallic gel pens to me, okay? And it doesn't show up like that because the inks are the same value okay, the gel pen inks are the same value of inks that she has colored the trees with, but it makes for a nice highlight like this if you kind of tilt it, but I think we can make some areas stand out a little bit more um, from a visual standpoint, just a very, um, that are more obvious and apparent, okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do on here is, let's just see if we can Everything on here is so beautiful and varied in terms of hue, but there's not a lot of intensity, okay, range. It's all kind of mid-tone intensity. They're not dull, but they're not bright, okay? Some are eh, a little bit brighter in the greens and stuff. So I think we can increase that range, but let's just not, let's not go crazy with it, okay? Let's just make kind of minor tweaks here, okay? So here is uh, sunlight yellow, okay? So let's add some of this around. Now, eh, let me go a little bit lighter. I want to go subtle, okay? And then if we want to, we can always build, you know, more. Okay, this is lettuce, what? Lettuce green? No. Maybe I can use that in the grassy area down there. Uh, let's see. I wish I had a little bit of a duller yellow. Oh, here we go. This is the shuttle art one, pale yellow, okay? This pen costs like 50 cents. See that right there? I don't know if you can tell. See how much more intense it is? I don't want to add it everywhere, but we just want to kind of increase that shimmer a little bit, okay? 
This scene looks fine as it doesn't need anything, okay? These are just some potential things that can be done if you choose to. You may like it better before. I, uh, I hope I'm not ruining your scene, Carolyn, but uh, we'll see where we get to with this. And we'll see if you like it or not. Uh, the, if you don't like it, then this could be a lesson on what not to do which is just as important sometimes as knowing what to, what you can do. Okay, so kind of, I'm just kind of scumbling this around. I'm, not, I'm doing this type of thing. Okay, now as I apply this, it looks much brighter, I notice. But then as it dries, it looks just, just as dull as the color that it really is. So I think I can get a little bit more bold. But I like to start off light, though. Okay, let me see this one right here. This one's melon yellow. Okay. A little bit more intense, okay. It's a little bit darker, too. Okay, so I move into that, and then I blend that out a little bit. My main goal on this one is do not, you know, mess up what she has already established here perfectly well, okay? All right, so here's a little bit of brown, okay? So see, on this one right here, that bridge isn't modeled quite as much as the previous one in terms of volumes, okay? Having kind of that darker side than the top gives it a more three-dimensional feel because we're saying that light is hitting it kind of differently on both areas, so. A little bit of shadow down there. She's got that shadow down really well and her varied boards, but let's just take it a little bit more so we're increasing the value range of that area like that. So see, I, I put that one down, but I didn't treat it the same way on everything. And then I, I can come up like this with another color and just kind of blend that in like so. Okay. I see that aged kind of look in there. See these all these rocks down here? What you do is really fun to do. Don't think about every single rock. But just on a few of these rocks, grab, you know, kind of a, a tone that's kind of similar to that that's down there on the road. And just add in some additional shadows on some of these rocks. It gives them volume and opacity. It's saying that, you know, light isn't kind of just shining right through them. It's not needed, but I think it helps a little bit. I'm looking down there. She did tone those at the base of those things. Awesome going. I'm just taking a little bit further here, okay? Let's see the shadow down here. Just reiterate that shadow a little bit. This is not blending it in very well, but you just add it in a light color, or a darker color like that, and then go back in with... Let me just go in with the blender one, okay? And just blend that out a little bit. Okay, blend in here. What you do is you end up picking up some of that tone. I think the horse, see that horse right there is just straight white. Let's say it's a black horse or something like that. Let's bring some of that color from that water over here, okay? So see in this area right here, go like that, and then I'll just kind of blend 
that into it. I'll spread that color around a touch. Leave it like so. So there's a little bit of that blue in there. This might be photo paper. I'm, I don't know. Is it photo paper, Carolyn? We'll put kind of in the notes section. I'll see if I can get some details from her. If this is photo paper, I, I sure hope that uh, that VersaFine dries. <laughs> I'll spray seal and try to fix it down if it is photo paper. Because I'm noticing as I go into that with the blender pen into that black ink, it's kind of moving it around a little bit. Okay, this is a little bit of a really dull green, okay? But it's kind of um, expanding on the uh, intensity range down there. It could just be that it's very wet, though. Okay. All right, now, let's see. On this one right here, I'm going to go in with my white paint pen, kind of before I do um, some... Uh, Pigment ink, okay. All right, so look at this. See this down here in the shadows of those rocks? So if you put the shadows in the darker areas of the rocks, those areas can really utilize some highlights on the light side of the rocks, and just basically on the top portions of some of them. Don't do it on all of them. Okay, look at those rocks down there. Don't those look dimensional? Let me see. I, I'm a little bit too overexposed here my camera. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, this road down here can use some highlights. I'm also putting some highlights on some of these rocks down here in the road. They look a little bit more dimensional that way. You can also put just a few dots down here to suggest um, kind of a three-dimensional type of item within that space, within that rock. And then there's rocks right here on the sides of the uh, pathway. I'm just doing a little, you know, it's just a little dot on the tops of these rocks, okay? On the grassy areas, we can do a little bit of uh, highlighting on the tops of them. The more I do this, the more rocks I see. Uh, sometimes it could be a little bit overkill, so just, like I said, you know, keep in mind as you're doing it. See those little textures in there? Let's see this area in here. See that grass texture right there? On the top of them, like that. These could even be wildflowers in here. Okay, so see we have those types of textures already down there. Didn't it bring that little spirit of that meadow to life like that? But now see, up in the trees, okay, we can do the same thing. I'm flipping this upside down so I can have better access to this area. So I don't have to put my hand in that area. Okay, so at the tops of those branches, different leaf groupings. This is a really great job, Carolyn. The more I look at the details here, I mean, this is the like I think this is the the next scene that she did after that previous one that totally got uh, you know really dark. The ver uh, the amount of variation in terms of hue and uh, contrast, light and dark throughout that this whole area really makes it for a nice rich beautiful changing surface. It's all about kind of that having that variation and variety. See that? So that those highlights are really standing out right there. So we're going into it. From a textural standpoint, 
Um, everything is kind of similar, so these are just, I mean, this is a similar texture as well, but it's a different value, so it kind of stands out like that. So it's got that nice little shimmer to it. And, and here, sometimes I, I like kind of bringing out my uh, tree uh, um, uh, tree trunks and tree limbs within these areas as well. A little bit. It's a little bit varied. I, I just kind of, I don't stick to um, the tree specifically, exactly, or the design, otherwise it's driving nuts. Something like that. All right. Now that's standing out a little bit too much, but we'll just kind of mellow it out a little bit with a little bit of that dusting of uh, pigment ink. My pigment ink applicators almost had it. Look at this cotton ball. This is probably the tenth scene I've used this on. I don't know, maybe more. Okay, let's take a look at it. Uh, let me get a photo of this one too before the white pigment ink is employed. All right. Let's be a, a lot more selective with this one because I don't want to change things too much. We just want to kind of embellish. The other one, it became a really quite a significant player in terms of the, <laughs> the visuals um, of that piece because it just, it was so dark, so it kind of needed it. But on this one, it's just slight embellishment uh, is what... Uh, I think is not really called for even, but could uh, potentially utilize just for that extra little tweak. See, like that, doesn't that light look like it's coming over the top of that and kind of glowing? I'll show you right there. See that? It shimmers, doesn't it? Like that? Or glows? I don't know. It's one of those two. Okay, so a little bit down here, and this will kind of play into those tree trunks as well. We're saying that light is hitting those tree trunks, so you can kind of put a little of this kind of creeping little mist at the base of that, being illuminated by that same lighting. A little bit of fog illuminated by the same lighting. Sometimes I have this kind of fog going into that covered bridge too. It kind of pulls the eye in that direction like that. See that? Okay, and you can just vary things a little bit down here. Okay, so what are we doing? Lighting, adding lightness, right? Value, texturally soft and uh, otherwise pretty sharp areas. But the sharp areas look even sharper contrasted against the soft, wouldn't you say? I mean, look at that bridge. And um, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's uh, and some of those colors right there are very bright or reasonably bright. But then where you put the white, it looks duller. So we really extended kind of the visual vocabulary within the scene in general and also in little spaces and objects too. All right, see this um, character moving in here. I think he looks just fine as is, but if you want them kind of a little bit in a little bit of fog too, you can kind of make them kind of related to the scene in general a little bit more by putting them in that same type of 
have softer lighting. Okay, it's darkening up a little bit. Let me put another extra little layer. Okay. How does that look? It's not huge changes, okay? All I just did was a few little tweaks on here. I'm tempted to add in some of that foreground right here, but I, it doesn't need it uh, by any means. I think it looks just good as is. I'm looking at this piece right here to see if this ink is drying, and I, I think it is drying up here. Eh, it's still a little moist. It's, it's always that moist, though, be it on whatever type of paper. But... Um, I know those reeds in the foreground, just a little bit of a stronger reed, something larger might be kind of nice. I think I'm going to do that, if you don't mind me, Carolyn. Okay, let's see. Again, with the Versafine. It just adds a little bit of a larger dimension here. I'm going on the two corners here. I'm not going to put one over the front of that uh, character. I just kind of have one kind of flanking it, okay? Changing the height and angle of it, okay? So let's take a look at right here. See this right here? There's a contrast. So I went a little bit higher, and then the next impression is a little bit lower. And the next branch is a little bit lower. So it kind of pulls the eye and it funnels the eye down this way and right up there, right along her visual. She made an incredible visual pathway right here to enter the scene through. So I think that looks really great. I just kind of uh, tweaked this a touch to create that slope down this way. Okay, And it also kind of frames it off like that. All right, so anyway, that was my lesson uh, on these three scenes here. Okay, so just employing, again, you know, my little charts here. Value, intensity, and texture. And, and it takes a little, you know, time to kind of figure these things out. Value it just means retain your lights. This is what I always talk in all my scenes. Don't tone everything out the same. Leave some lights in the sky. Leave some lights on the ground. Leave some lights on a rock. Okay? It doesn't mean rocks can all be in, you know, shadow. But if you're doing some areas, you know, retain some areas of light like that. So she's retained some areas of light light in here. This area right in here got pretty dark. But there is some light in here. If this whole thing was dark, it would look okay, but it looks, looks better with that lighting on there, don't you think? Okay, so it just means don't tone everything out, okay? Value, uh, light and dark. But the white pigment ink and the white uh, paint pen is also your lights in terms of your value, okay? Intensity, uh, I use Marvy inks a lot of times. They're very bright, but I don't use them all in their full intensity, I use kind of lighter versions of it. I'll kind of streak some colors down or sponge some colors down, and it's a very dull version of it. But the more I add, the brighter it gets. Um, other types of brands, Memento, Distress, and everything like that, they have some really bright colors, but most of them in general are a little bit less bright in their brightest. Um, but remember, I mean, the, Memen uh, the Distress inks are supposed to look aged, so they stay away from this range in here. For the most part, some of them are pretty bright, but they go into this dull. Does, dull does not mean uninteresting or I don't know, less quality, but they provide a really great range when combined with the brighter tones, okay? Textures, okay? Textures are things like, again, the white pigment ink and uh, um, white paint pens, but from a textural forms, there's the imagery as well, okay? So you have... Um, sharp and soft but if you don't do anything with any degree of softness like having some lighter tones only going back in and adding in white pigment ink can do all of that work for you if you need it to okay it's a workhorse in terms of um 
kind of uh, some solution uh, solutions that it can bring to it. Look at that white pigment ink around here, and see on that bird wing on the underside of this one. You can see that the sun is coming from here, so I've illuminated that, that wing there. Side of the tree facing the light. See, this tree is just all black, but you just if there is a little bit of light behind it, you can just put a little pigment ink on there. Suddenly you have soft and dark, light and, I mean, soft and sharp, light and dark, and, I don't know, I guess the value of it is, uh, or the intensity of it is dull and, and bright as well. Okay? So it can do all kinds of things just all in one fell swoop. Okay, so, I mean, there's other things that can be done here. There's, like I said, you know, there was the uh, sharp images stamped back into it. Uh, I don't know. All of that different type of methodology <laughs> to achieve these different things. So there's different things that you can do. But keep these things in mind. But if you were to only keep one thing in mind only, okay, it's the value. And I talk about this in every type of scene. Just retain some lights and darks throughout your pieces, throughout your objects, it doesn't mean that everything can't be in, in one whole section, but just in some area of the scene, I would suggest having a range because that value range right there is, um, I, 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 got, I think it's the most important thing if you were just to do anything. It's the value right in there because um, it defines objects and uh, in terms of a three-dimensional form. Um, even if you have like a shadow puppet that's only like, like a silhouette, like a hard silhouette against something. It has to stand out against something in the background, so it has to be light enough for that contrast to show, okay? And, and then uh, I would really suggest uh, playing around with some pigment inks, be it whatever type of uh, media you're working in. It works pretty good, maybe not for like charcoal drawings or something like that, but I have used it with the kind of a charcoal drawing type of look, and I thought it looked pretty good. So anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. I hope this video came in handy. I want to, again, thank Carolyn for sharing her pieces with us and turning um, kind of uh, her pieces into a, a really great learning type of uh, vehicle for everyone here. Okay, so... Um, I think, I, I don't know what she was going to do with us when I, I think, I don't know if she was going to trash it or what, but it got pretty dark, but I really like that one a lot now too, so, um, all kinds of rich type of uh, surfaces on here and a tremendous amount of depth, um, because I, I really had to kind of, uh, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know, jack up some of these, um, uh, processes and techniques and, uh, you know, kind of in their extremity, but I don't know, in their extremity, I thought they were pretty good uh, in terms of um, the things that, that they were able to do and to kind of solve. They do that to me in a lot of my scenes too, um, no matter what they look like, especially in my latest alcohol pieces. So, um, okay, so thanks again for uh, watching for everyone. And, uh really fun stuff. Stick with your scenes and, uh, you know, work them to their completion and try to just kind of expand on those uh, different aspects of them. And I think they'll all come around very nicely. If you have some scenes that, uh, I don't know, were destined for the trash and you just can't figure out any kind of solutions at this point in time, if you want me to uh, kind of show you what uh, things you can potentially do. You can always kind of email me a file and I can make some suggestions like that or you can always mail them to me like this set right here and I can see what we can do with them. Okay? Thanks for tuning into the channel.